OK, so first of all, I'm Alex. I'm CTO at Diffuse. And here with the team here, we have a sponsored booth. And we're an infrastructure provider. But I want to know a little bit more about you guys. Where are you coming from? And what's your, what are you here to do? Like, you're a hacker. What's your level of knowledge of Ethereum in general? So please. Okay. Okay. Like cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And, and Ethereum, you know a bit more. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Okay, and why do you guys came here? Why do you guys come here? <laughs> yeah, to, to this hack, to this uh, talk. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to quickly explain what we do. Okay, in simple terms. I'm sorry for the camera. <clears throat> and, uh, and then I can demo a few things of what we can do, okay? If you have any questions whatsoever, you stop me. So at Diffuse, we have base layer infrastructure that we offer. So we can think of something like Infura or Alchemy or some other providers of nodes. But what we do is that we crack the egg open of the blockchain and we pipe this data into an infrastructure that allows you to query the chain a lot faster, a lot cheaper, and with greater guarantees than what a node gives you. So we're able to search the whole blockchain. Some things you would do on Infura would take a lot, a lot of calls, and you will get on our platform with a lot faster. Under one second, which can search the whole history. And then you can have a lot more granular terms. So if you're looking for something that called your contract, a from or a to, you can pass those variables. You can search for a particular method, particular logs, signed by that or that account. There's a lot more granularity in what we expose as a search language. So it means that your application can do less work and less lines of code to feed their UI. That search engine also is streaming and is capable of going back in the history, but also stream in the future. Same search terms. You can then, from the point you receive, like let's say the fast, last 50 transactions that match your query, take that little cursor and you can then search forward for any new things happening on the chain. But the particularity is that this, so maybe you all not know, but Ethereum is eventually consistent. Like you could have a transaction transferring a million dollars. It's in a block, but it might not be true again in three seconds. Maybe there's another block that will come and take precedence. So in normal cases, developers need to handle that in code. They need to get a new block, and then if there's another block that takes precedence, do all the operations to reverse certain transactions and then reapply the new block. And maybe there's two blocks that came. So you need to handle all these edge cases. It's very difficult. With our endpoint, you query once, and we're going to navigate all these things for you. We're going to send you an undo signal and a redo signal or you know, the next blocks that match your query. So you always have one thing to think about, one linear stream. And that feature there is aware of the forks, is aware of the reorganization that happened when the network gets into that eventually consistent state, which is a database term, right? The, the, those little cursors are fork aware. So if you disconnect for an hour and come back, we will still navigate a posteriori that fork for you and still give you the guarantee that you'll never miss a beat. <clears throat> so that's one thing. Are there any questions about that? Yes. How? How do you what do you mean how? <laughs> how? How to make it great or how to use it? No, the, how do you navigate the forks and how do you know if that's true? So the engine that we built yeah. is aware of the consensus algorithm of the different chains we're rolling out. Right? So that means the thing that reorganizes how it chooses the longest chain on Ethereum, or actually it's the most voted, like it's most votes uh, with the uncles and all that, right? So there's a little algorithm that decides what's the longest chain right now, more weight. And that's how we're going to decide to undo the segment that is not true anymore and then apply the new blocks. But that's part of the search engine that is also 
historic and also you know, streaming with the protocol. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Your linear fee will receive undo true and then reapply the other things as they go. So it's sort of corrected on the fly, but linearly for you. You don't need to handle the graph aspect of it, right? So that's greatly simplified for developer. You have one include if you're on a web thing, you just NPM, and then you can do a search query. It could be streaming. That's all dealt with a GraphQL interface by the lib and a streaming a subscription. And then uh, you get the feed. And with the GraphQL interface we provide, you can select only the payload you need. You can select just a, fun, a bunch of feeds and put that directly in your mobile app. So all of a sudden, it's not incredibly costly to, to just access your app from mobile users, for example. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Isn't that cool? It's cool. It's even cooler when you've run into all the headaches you need to write to handle that. And for those who know, I'm just pitching a few other things. Like competitors often offer a big pool of nodes, and then users hit the load balancer and they hit all different nodes. But those different nodes are like master, master replicated. So one could be at block five, 502 and this one 503. And then you hit another one, it's 505, but you haven't seen 504. So you need, the client needs to distinguish all these things and, and navigate the inconsistencies of the nodes which you want to load balance. But the Diffuse platform offers one unified view. If we give you something, anything you come back will give you then the subsequent will be able for you to sort of navigate back and ensure that you never miss a beat because it's a holistic view of the network. If we've shown you a fork, we'll always be able to navigate you out of it. If we haven't shown you a fork, we'll never show it to you. Does that make sense? Isn't that even more cool? <clears throat> it's pretty cool. Okay, so there's another feature that I want to highlight because we just released that <clears throat> and that can make your apps during this week a lot flashier. So I don't know if you went to different uh, dApps. I went to Uniswap before the revamp just uh, recently, and I sent a few dollars, and then sent a transaction, and there was zero feedback from the app. I was like scared, because I sent a few dollars, more than a few, maybe too much, and, and, and I had no feedback. The transaction was sent, I had no clue if it was settled, I had no clue of the progress, and that's scary, right? You don't want to have people live that because they're going to distrust very fast. So the endpoint, the endpoint we're providing is what we call the transaction lifecycle endpoint. And it's a simple endpoint for you, but in the back end, we listen to the network, everything that's flowing through the networks and blocks and in different forks and all of that, and we will send you a single simple stream of what is happening for that particular transaction. So if it gets into a, if it's been seen on the network, we're going to send you, it's pending. And then we could give you some estimates. And then we could eventually, we don't have that right now rolled out, probabilistic finality, how long we could expect that to be in a block. And then if a block arrives that mines it, we send you the changes and all the information about the block, then again, just the bits that you want, so that you can show your user it's in a block. And then if you have another confirmation, we send you that signal too. If it gets forked, then we're going to send you it's forked, it's back into the pending. If it's replaced, but all these transaction states that you don't want to care about, we send it in a linear stream so that you could hook it up to a small UI, and then your users are more comfortable, right? That's the sort of, of abstraction we want to give to the chain so that people developing application, it's a no-brainer to make the UX great, right? So that's what we enable. Do you have any questions about these things? Was that too fast? No? It's great. Um, <clears throat> no questions at all? So <clears throat> right now, we released uh, the platforms, the different components on EOS. We have seven networks there, and we have a few private networks for customers. And right now on Ethereum, we released on Mainnet and Robston. That's where we're at. <coughs> and we're looking at other chains. We're trying to, so our focus is developers. We're making the tools not for token holders. We're not shifting the business for token holders. Our focus is great developer tools. Okay, <coughs> so what I can do is show you a little thing. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna connect to this. Okay, <coughs> I'm gonna go around and show you just a little Example, because it's slick. Okay, we, we built a small block explorer 
It's called ETHQ. Look. It's called ETH ETHQ. It looks like that. I don't care about the block explorer. It's just a marketing ploy because we built that in four days. <coughs> but in there, it show it's just a, you know, a way to resurface the API because what all you see done here is actually something you can do directly from the API. It's, this is, um, yeah, it's a segue for developers to learn. It's not a block explorer just for you to observe, right? Although, <clears throat> I have to say that this block explorer is, because of the data we provide, the deepest block explorer on the market. Because, so for those who know, transactions on Ethereum have internal transactions, and they can, like you send some dollars here, it could have side effects to transfer $70 million and do 70 transfers under the hood, right? You don't easily normally see that when you look at transactions on Ethereum, but this Block Explorer, actually, the Diffuse platform, so let me show, so this one has nine calls. <clears throat> so uh, the Diffuse platform offers all that tree of calls, and for each of these calls, we can provide like all the state changes, all the balance changes, all the... Um, Fees that were incurred and the reasons for the fees, they were minor fees and, uh, you know, uh, gas costs, whatever. And, uh, and all of this is also available through the API and the search engine allows you to search down to that level. So you can search inside transactions. You could say, who called my contract, but not just from the exterior, also who called it as a side effect of the execution of another contract. So you have... You know, and all these internal transactions are real transactions. They're not less important, like there's this on the same setting, but most infrastructure providers don't make them shine at the same setting, right? So we didn't want that. We wanted to have all the data available for search and for indexing, taking decision, trading decisions, whatever you're building. If you want to read the chain the most profound way and the easiest way, really, is, is, uh, is to pluck out a GraphQL query. I'm going to show you in just a moment. Just I want to announce that. During the hackathon, if you have a great, you, if you're building a great experience on top of Diffuse, we have five prizes. Is that right? Five prizes. Two thousand dollars the first, then a thousand, a thousand, five hundred, five hundred. Okay. And what we're looking at is, we want, we love great user experiences. If you guys build a great user experience, and because of the things in there, you're able to do so. You know, because we have widgets that are crisp and, and, and reactive to what's happening and give a great user experience, that's what we'll value. You guys are going to shine, we're going to shine too. So that's a win-win. And uh, so can't wait to see what you guys are going to be building. Want me to show you the, the GraphQL API here? Or what are you most interested in? GraphQL. Right? Want to see that? <clears throat> so, like, we purposely in, in the, uh, oh, I ha we hit it. So our goal is here, what you see in the, GraphQ, in, in the Explorer is to have a button to then show the GraphQL query that is done in this page. So you can just copy paste and go and, and play with it. So this here, oh, just pour mal faire. I think that's one of them. So <clears throat> this here's an example of me. Let me I'm going to grab a pending transaction on uh, <coughs> Etherscan. This one, okay? I know it's boring because you don't see it. So this is streaming here. We saw the transaction on the network. Oh, now we had another transaction. It's now in block. And then we're gonna see confirmations coming in. So this is streaming. The first one we saw was the transition that told us, I've seen the transaction. We saw the transaction here. Now that's in a block. And now we have new confirmations. And the transition is, Conf confirmed, and that goes up and up. Okay, you'll see that in the, in the little widget up there. Let me show you the widget instead. <coughs> so I'm gonna take another, another pending transaction on Etherscan. So is that good here? That's pending. By the way, our API will provide you with at least two to three seconds faster response than what you get on Etherscan. The, our API will send you that information before Etherscan will refresh their page and show that to you. So you get a better experience for your users instead of sending them to Etherscan. And also, <coughs> so you see the little widget there? Well, okay, it's showing the things already. 
Otherwise, we'd be in pending state. You see all the state transitions here happening. And also, the, um, um, the latency of block propagation on our platform is approximately one to two seconds faster than competitors. So if you want to have the information the quickest, you're better off here. Because of the infrastructure we built, it's like tent poles you know, that are stuck together. If the block arrives, it's pushed directly to your UI. The latency is very minimal between all these, all these steps. And it's filtered through search. So there's still a lot of power there, but it's, uh, it's difficult to compare. And there's one thing I wanted to add, but I don't remember. OK. Did you have any other questions? You want to see more, right? Like, you'd like to see the screen, huh? Is this available for us? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you, you create an account on there because you want to have a, a token so that you could eventually set rate limiting options. When you deploy that to production, this is you can scale to millions of users with that platform, right? <clears throat> you could set that and decide, oh, I want to, you know, this sort of growth. If it goes, it's being abused. I want to sort of cap it. So you create API keys that have those capacity, and then uh, and then you just when you query, you send that as a token, and uh, then you can uh, query. This is a this is a generous free tier. The whole thing is hosted and. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, for the whole weekend. And we have, a, <clears throat> we have coupons. If you ever want to go like crazy and download, uh, I don't know, to 300 million, uh, all the blocks of the chain and all that, you get, to get the coupon, you'll be able to do that, no problem. <clears throat> Does that make sense? OK, look. Oh, uh, we'll give you the coupons. So Where's the coupon? The They're at, at our booth. The, oh, yeah? The, the booth. Yeah, we'll have you some of the booths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, you can pick up a few ones. If you have students, you know, tell them. So the thing is, with that, so what we've seen from customers adopting our solution in comparison, so one of our customers was one of the top users of the top infrastructure on Ethereum, let's say, okay? Three, third, third largest customer in terms of volume. And they switched to that, and they were able to kill 90% of their code because a lot of the code was handling the intricacies of load balanced nodes that are our master, master, and and not in the same spot. And also, the reliability that this provided means that even mid-block, they could be interrupted because the cursor was a replaying or re-putting them back inside the navigation of a block, right? So the, the reliability they got like, could, could cut off so much junk. So that means that if you want to get started, it's a lot easier to get started. And if you want to get it right, you don't need to do much, right? Because you you'll have it right, because the bulk of the work is done on the server, right? OK, I don't want to stretch it too much. But if you have any questions, I mean, I, I told you to interrupt me. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's public. It, it is public. I mean, it's an imperfect explorer. We're going to improve it because we want to, to show the, the Diffuse platform. But it's still a good, it's a good, a good uh, you know, uh, piece. And, and our goal is that you could slowly discover the search terms when you click on things. If you click on the little thing here, the account, it's going to craft a query that you now discover. You can say from this address or to this address. So you have things in both directions. And then you can craft and change that query and see different listings. It's very fast. Does that make sense? Ethq.app. And there's ropston.ethq.app. Yeah, and otherwise it's diffuse.io. We've just revamped re re the docs, so you have all the GraphQL schema. There's a few missing things. If you have any comments on the, uh, in the we've done a lot of work on <coughs> the getting started material. If you have any hiccup, by all means, poke us, come and see us, call us in. I'm going to go in and hack it and release under your foot. <laughs> We're going to ship it. So a bunch of the core engineering team is here to, to make sure everything is uh, top notch. OK, I had 25 minutes. So if, oh, there's one minute left. <laughs> if, you, if you have a, any other question, I'm happy to accept. Otherwise, uh, I'll let you go hack. I mean, yes? So your goal for the user experience? My goal for? For us to build the like, user experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you, so what we will value, as I said, is the, the uh, user experience. If what you build, it doesn't need to be a web front end. If you have a command line tool or, I don't know, something simpler, but it's able to react to what's happening on the chain because it's using those APIs. Like, it makes your application shine and it makes our API shine. That's what we'll value this. and how, That's how we'll judge the best use and the best user experience made possible by the chain. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Well, <clears throat> I want you to build great things, right? And if you build great things that are meaningful, not just because it's a quick hack to use Diffuse, right? Because you're building something great, and Diffuse is part of it. I mean, that's where we both win, right? Does that make sense? I got a lot of nodding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you for coming. Go hack and uh, and be happy.